Fred Matiangi anafungua rasmi kongamano la 39 la Sibu linaloendelea huko Mombasa. Na kwa maana hilo la siku nne linalenga kujadili mbinu za kufufua uchumi hasa baada ya janga la COVID-19. Francis Mtalaki huko pale tupate picha za moja kwa moja tukisikia waziri anasemaje. Something cabinet. It is abundantly clear to me that for a country of our size we don't have the luxury of working in silos and always trying to sustain the fault line of them versus us. Those of you who are in private sector or those of you who may not be in mainstream government are not relevant or important to the workings and development of government. In fact, the philosophy of government has been, and President Kenyatta has espoused this in his famous all of government approach, that we must build an inclusive integrated framework of providing services to our people. So we benefit a lot uh, from professional advisory services from organizations such as ISPAC. Mr. Chairman, you told me this morning that of the 25,000 members of this organization, a good number of them are public servants. And therefore today, allow me to speak to you very candidly about what I think we need to do, all of us, to strengthen the provision of services and to effectively deliver for the people of Kenya. And I will begin by recommending this for you and all of us, especially for you accountants, to really walk the path of recovery and to ensure resilience, we must espouse a 3P approach. That is preservation, protection, and broader management of public resources. The challenge of our country uh, begins with the way we use public resources. That's why I'm recommending that 3P approach, preservation, protection, and prudent deployment of our public resources. My two sisters who are here with me our Auditor General and our Controller of Budget can you relate to some of the things I am going to tell you. For the last four and a half years, when I've been the chairperson of NDICC, as a result of Executive Order Number 1 of 2019, the President asked me to chair the implementation of government projects. I have to sincerely tell you that I have come face to face with the horrors of our unprofessionalism and the way in which we misuse public resources. When I look at the A3 sheet that I'm prepared and presented with on government projects, all the challenges we deal with have got to do with an accountant or the other. And let me be frank with you good people. The bending bills that we have been having in government, when I came in I started with six billion shillings in the prison service, half of them are unpayable, because procedures were not followed, some of them are cooked. And by the way, the people who cook them are not mamamboga we collect from Korogosho or anywhere. It is members of ISPAC <laughs> who are accountants and who are your members, they are the ones who cook them. Now, the ESCC has discovered some of my staff, some who may be your members, who have 260 something million in their bank accounts they cannot account for, who have 272 million shillings in their bank accounts they cannot account for. I came here specifically to ask you, Mr. Chairman, when is ISPAC going to join the war against corruption? <laughs> when is ISPAC going to join the rest of us in fighting corruption in the public sector in our country? because you asked me to talk about the role of professionals in effective delivery in the coordination of services. One role is that we must all join government and help my sister here, the Auditor General, and help my sister, the controller of budget, in fighting corruption. We will not preserve, we will not protect, and we will not prudently use public resources if we do not stand up and fight corruption in public service. The challenge of this country, and let me be frank with you, my brothers and sisters, our problems, if you are to list them, number one, two, and three, 
Number one is corruption. Number two is corruption. And number three is corruption. They have nothing to do with all this. Yes, we want to fight poverty. How are you going to fight poverty if we are not fighting corruption? If we are losing public resources every day, if government is leaking like a seed. So when will East Park join the war against corruption? This morning, I had this very uh, poetic feeling, and I was telling your chairman in the holding room that we all look forward to a day when East Park will buy space in the papers and publish the names of the accountants they are removing from their roles and membership on account of cooking books. Because the problem that Dr. Magdalene Yakango deals with in county governments is not caused by ordinary people who sell sugarcane and sweet bananas in Suneka. It is caused by accountants. The people who cook books are your members, are the ones who got us all these problems. The challenges that, Mr. Chairman, you pointed out about bending bills in government, the reason why we have a problem with bending bills is because of resources being deployed in an Alawi Momana, and the people who are doing that are professionals. So the first role that you can play in the effective delivery of government service is by ensuring that the law is followed and ensuring prudent management of the resources that have been entrusted with us. Let me be even more sincere and tell you, frankly, I don't think as a public servant we can do without you. So the profession of accounting and auditing and all of you financial experts are people we need. We need you as much as we need doctors. We need you as much as we need lawyers. We need you as much as we need everyone. But I think if you resolved as members of this profession that you are going to stand up for your country, for the protection of the resources of your country, we will do a lot better than we have done in the past. Number two. If you look at the implementation of government projects across the board, I've never had this opportunity, now I will talk about it today. The implementation of national government projects in the country goes well, but a lot of it is hampered by poor contracting, poor advisory services. The contracting is done by professionals, it's in most cases lawyers, in most cases financial experts like yourselves. And I ask, I was asking the Auditor General this morning, in the holding room. There are contracts I'm sure she has seen that I have seen where you ask yourself the question, who on earth would enter into a contract of this kind? If this was your personal business, would you spend resources in this manner? Where we pay a contractor 40% of the total contract sum for doing nothing because we written contracts that allow contractors to get away with murder or alternatively, where there's connivance between professionals in government and in the public sector and those that are intent on looting public resources to do so willingly and while they are protected by clauses they write into those contracts. My brothers and sisters, we have a duty and that duty is to preserve, to protect and to prudently use our public resources. What I said is a 3P approach for all of us. Resilience will come if we preserve the meager resources that we have and use them effectively as we go forward. Secondly, building capacity is very good and I like um, what you have outlined in your vision, in your books and what ISPAC would like to do as we work very hard to grow the economy. I would like us to build institutional partnerships between ISPAC and government so that we can enhance the capacity of those who provide services in the public sector. Recently, Mr. Chairman, the government has finally established or transformed the National Defense College to the National University, National Defense University. The intention of the National Defense University is to integrate the military experience and the service that has been given at the National Defense College into the professional cadres or public service. I would like to ask you, Mr. Chairman, that one of these fine days we we'll begin discussions with you to see how we can build partnerships between ISPAC 
and the National Defense University so that the ethos of discipline and integrating a focused and strategic management of resources is also spread to the profession of accounting so that when your members find opportunities in the public service, they understand that every resource we have is a strategic opportunity that must be managed in a strategic manner for us to move forward. We long lost the days when we used to look at security of our country as something isolated from the rest of what happens in society. How we use the resources we have and how we deploy them is a security issue. Because if we don't use the resources we have effectively, we are making ourselves vulnerable as it were, and we are weakening ourselves as a society, and thereby increasing chances of vulnerability and failure as a society. And therefore, I bleed for institutional partnerships between yourselves and agencies of government, so that as we move forward, we understand that every decision we make and every deployment of resources we make must be done in a strategic manner. But thirdly and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, is the challenge I want to give you as professionals. Let's not delude ourselves. We don't believe as the executive branch of government that in and on our own, we can successfully fight uh, corruption. The war against corruption must involve all of us. It takes all of us to build a society of integrity. It takes all of us to preserve and protect and prudently use our resources. What that means is that each one of us, beginning from our individual capacities to institutional capacities such as uh, ISPAC, we now have to stand up and rise up to the challenge of dealing with the challenges of integrity in our country. Mr. Chairman, for the benefit of your organization, I have documented for you 18 cases where investigations are complete and they involve accountants and members of your organization who have been involved in malpractice that we all know. And I want to ask you, because I'm going to leave you my write-up, that the executive committee and the council of ISPAC begin leading from the front. Before Mr. Kinoti and Mr. Haji proceeds, you should also do your bit. Because surely you must be having an ethical code of conduct as accountants. Because all these people, I don't know whether any one of you has looked at the business daily this morning. All the stories on page one are about corruption. Which Barastedo is not paying X amount of money. Which claim is fraudulent. And in each of those, if you look at them, members of a wonderful organization called ISPAC are involved. So, Mr. Chairman, it's indeed the time for us to begin that crusade together with you so that we can deal with these issues and see how best we can clean up our country. No one is going to clean our country for us. We will do it ourselves. All those great countries we admire and all those great economies that we talk about and make reference to were done and built by the citizens of their country. And they were done through sacrifice. The independence of this country that we enjoy today, our nationhood, was paid for by some people's blood. What we are being asked to do as professionals to try and build our country in terms of upholding very strong principles of integrity is less than what many people paid before for this country. So I challenge you, especially after I leave these cases behind and the Auditor General is here as my witness and the controller of budget, <laughs> uh, I hope, Mr. Chairman, by next year we will hear a story about what your council finally did with these cases, because they have been investigated, the information is there, and if you need more, you can get from Mr. Kinoti and Mr. Haji and all these wonderful people at the EACC, and look at all these things. I told you when we spoke about the invitation to come here, I said, I love niceties of coming here and saying platitudes and reading a speech and saying, oh, it's a honor to be here. Uh, thank you so much, it gives me great pleasure and impression to be here. <laughs> Those platitudes are good, but I think it's time for us to be honest with one another. I don't want to wax real core and peer driven by saying, it gives me great pleasure to be here. It gives me great pleasure to be here. I'm happy to be here, yes. But let's have a honest conversation about our country, a honest conversation about how we are going to move our country forward. 
We can't just come to public service or public events like this, do nice things, become poetic, and say how grateful we are and how honored we are to be here before you, and then we get into the plane and go back to Nairobi. Then next year again, a set of people come, they say how grateful they are and how honored they are, they, then they go back to Nairobi. Let, let's do things that people will come and see that we have actually helped our country. It's time to have a honest conversation about the way in which we manage ourselves. It is time. And, and if there's any honor and any pleasure in doing this, let me tell you frankly, it is that I'm talking to my fellow citizens, my brothers and sisters, people we share a country with, and people by the grace of God we have the same destiny. It doesn't matter where you come from in this country. It doesn't matter where you went to school. It matters that you are here today. And it matters that we have an equal responsibility of moving our country to the next level. And we are not going to do that by consistently spending all our time on happiness phrases. You know, it gives me great pleasure, it's a honor to be here, and so on and so forth. We must also deal with the hard stuff. We have a problem in the country that needs to be solved. And we are either part of the problem or part of the solution, as it were. Mr. Chairman, you were asking this morning, you know, the government should intervene on food prices, oil prices, the government should step in, you know, fine, we will step in, we already have in many cases, but you know, we don't step in with our money, we step in with tax resources, and we want more of those tax resources, and where will they come from if we are still in half of that? But the question is, we would like to step in, we would like to help, but the more of our tax resources that we are able to preserve, that we are able to protect, the better for all of us as it were. And all these roles we play in the public service, what I do today and what others do in the public service, are things we do now. We are on the stage now, we are doing our role now. Tomorrow others will do their bit, and the day after others will do their bit and so on. While we are here and while we are playing this role, we must be honest